Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Who knows where we will go, what video games we will see. This is a journey that no one has done before. Come back with me to October 1982. We were last checking out the release of Ladybug on the ColecoVision. So good, so much fun. Let's see what our next title is. Our next game release is on the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Grand Prix. Grand Prix is the 280th video game we've played on the Commodore VIC-20. There are 280 games that you can be playing right now on your Commodore VIC-20. This one is by Titan Programs. This marks the fifth game we've seen by Titan Programs. It's, it's another one of those Games Tape, Games Tape 1, or a game that's part of Games Tape 1. This one was available. Oh, we got an actually surprise one here. We have another one that's part. That's the Melbourne House Grand Prix of Innovative Cassette 2. So let's check that one out too. Why not? So ignore that. It's not Titan Programs. Let's see what the Grand Prix by Melbourne House was like. So this one's part of another compilation. Oh my goodness. So the controls are keyboard controlled only. <laughs> All you do is move the key, uh, the, the, the keys to move the car around. And I just tap the direction I want to go, and then you crash into it. Yeah, this definitely looks like one of those other bargain bin games. Yes, ouch is right. That's a really tight gap there to be able to make it through that. How in the world are you going to... Whoa, I did it. I don't believe it. I'm gonna... <laughs> I have no idea how I'm making it around the corners. So it was kind of fun, but let's play the real one. So here we go. By Titan Programs at some time the beginning of October 1982. Yes, it does make it look very modern. You drive your car along the Monza circuit using just A and D to move left and right. Watch out for obstructions on the track. All right, you got it. Hit any key to start. A and D is all we need. Let's go. Oh, yeah. You can definitely tell I'm playing Grand Prix on the Commodore VIC-20. This is yet another one of those auto-scrolling top-down racing games that essentially just move left and right and try to avoid obstructions. We've played uh, about five or six so far on the show. I really like the ones that aren't driving. It's more of a kind of like a Caverns of Mars variant. So there, uh, there's like a shooting element involved. But you just have to move left and right, and it just auto scrolls. I have no uh, way to do speed. All it is is two buttons, A and D on the keyboard, and you just have to avoid the walls. We played games like this on the home computer, I believe, since 1979. Probably even earlier than that, because because this kind of formula is is really simple to program and fun to play. At this point, it's it, it's a good chunk of time to waste, but um, you, you wouldn't get the most enjoyment out of it. It's getting tighter. As usual, the walls are closing in. <laughs> you, you think so, Curtis? Everyone learned how to play <laughs> play one of these games, or program one of these games. <laughs> Chiptune's already saying, punt it to Pluto. Another proof that we play every single game <laughs> that in existence. Oh man, they have, am I able to? Gosh, when you crash, do we get any stats? Or is it that it? That's it. We'll get, we get a rating. They give us an average rating. Well, I'm definitely not going to give this game an average rating. At least they had something at the end for us, which was kind of cool. So I'd say of all the games you could play right now on a home computer, this one is low, way low. Grand Prix is, I'm going to say, one and a half stars. It is technically not broken, but it's pretty bad of all the games you could play. Manly's with me, one and a half stars as well. I know, there's even slowdown in that punk rock. Can you believe it? It kind of gives you better perspective, though. When you see every single game, you kind of see what other people could be playing on home computers right now at some time in the world. All right, with that, let's see what our next release is. Coming up from one Commodore computer to another, here's the Commodore 64. Let's check out Greenhouse. This one is our 28th game on the Commodore 64, so only 28 that you could be playing out there. This is Greenhouse, and the only box I could find was the one from Italy. So here's the Italian box of Greenhouse, and then if you flip it over the back, very colorful, pretty cool seeing uh, a box from Italy, but we are going to play the first release in North America. I couldn't find the North American box, so th there are people that went out there and made their own fan box like this one. It just shows a screenshot of the game. It says it's an action game, Commodore Electronics, but yeah, it's just a fabricated box. Nothing official. Let's pop in and play some Greenhouse. This is by Commodore Electronics at some time the beginning of October 1982 in, in the United States first. So we're, we're seeing this first before we're going to Italy. No one is going to Italy right now. All right, here we go. We're in. The point of the game is I am a gardener, farmer... 
In the greenhouse, we have a sun that's rising in the background. As I move left and right, the green things popping up are weeds, and you want to get rid of those weeds. So all you do is move move across to the weeds, move left and right, and then push your button to erase the weeds. Now, the whole point of the game, though, is to grow stuff, not to just remove weeds. So you got to climb your ladder over here on either side, and you turn on water. But the idea is you want to have water on where there is no weeds growing. Because if you put water on where a, green, a weed is growing, let's see, I want to take this one out, it'll work. But if, the, if it's underwater, you can't take it out. And the weeds will start growing higher and higher. So I got to go turn off the water where the weeds are growing. And that one and that one. And then I got to go down and wipe them all out. These are just monstrous. Look at this. And we got to chop several times to knock them out. Get out of here. Keep on chopping them up. Whenever you move, your character has a little sound to them, almost like an homage to Dig Dug, you know, the way you move Dig Dug, and he has music that accompanies him. See, now I'm just watering the weeds, and I don't want that. Let's go back up. And that's a good point, Curtis. Of all the games we've seen right now, this concept, this is no variant. This isn't ripping off anything else. This is something original of an idea. It is definitely an arcade game, but... Um, the n there's no other game we played that's like this. All right, let's turn off the water and turn off the water and turn off the water and then make our way down, chop them off, get those out of here. I thought I could show you at least one flower. None of the flowers have grown. These weeds are going crazy. All right, let's go ahead and go back up. We'll turn off this one and that one and then get the water going right there and right there. There we go, we got one flower. <laughs> We're the, the worst gardener ever. Got one from the whole thing. Oh, the weeds are still going. Man. That's true. I'm, I am marking this as a female protagonist on the video game. I don't know if anyone has seen the spreadsheet that we have down below. If you look at all the video games we've ever played, on that spreadsheet, then I mark the video games that we have um, played in more detail. All right, let's turn that one off. Okay, go. Go give me some flowers right there. And then now we can go down and get rid of all these weeds. Yeah, keep dreaming, Chiptune. <laughs> there it is. No. Okay, we got uh, taller flowers. But you get the concept. You keep on going. What I don't know... Oh, the sun went down. Is this where we get our score? Yeah, so, so it does have a day that passes in the background, and then you move on to the next day. But if you notice down the bottom, I'm not showing much score, so uh, is there something I'm doing wrong in the game? Maybe if the developer wants to drop me a line, you can tell me what, what I'm not doing right. From all the descriptions I've seen and other people that have played the game, this is the game. This is what you do. Go, go, go. There. Got it. Got one flower up there. <laughs> I don't know if it is. I don't know if it is, Jeff. <laughs> so I really have nothing else to compare this game to. There is no other video game that's trying this. And, and th this concept is fresh, too. We, we did play one of the first cooking video games where you had to be a, a chef to move things um, onto a plate. And this is one of the very first gardening video games. You know, obviously, it's in a, a, a arcade style. You got one flower that's going up there, and you can see the sun moving up in the background. So um, if the water's on any of the plants, you can't chop them down. We can't chop anything down. Yeah, you can't even chop the flower down. There we go. And uh, if you can find the manual, which I could not, I don't ha know if th they have a name. Let's go to the next one. There we go. But I love the uniqueness. We got a flower that's almost there. Get it. Yes. And flower goes to the top. I still got no score, so um, I know this is made by a real company, and I, I know that this was released. Um, so this th this is how you play it. I'm not still sure if I'm doing it right, but I like the idea. The sun going up and down in the background. And a gardening game. It's another one of those titles that makes you kind of feel like you're doing work. because you or, or something's futile. <laughs> it did look like it died when it reached the top. So we weren't supposed to bring the flower to the top? Oh, there you go. Chiptune throwing out a three and a half star of all the time. So <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about that one. Yes, right? Oh, maybe there is. Well, there's only one button on the Commodore 64 joystick. 
Uh oh. Now we're shaking our heads and the. Uh oh. Because we got a weed to the top. If a weed makes it to the top, then you just shake your head. So maybe we gotta go over there on the sides. So cool. You've, of course, already thrown out four stars of all the games you can play on a home computer. And then I got another three, three star rating on there. Fascinating. The other thing is to note is the large character that you're moving around. Now, this is a newer computer. The Commodore 64 doesn't have that many games. But for something original, something that we haven't seen before for Greenhouse, I, I, it's very fun. It, it has an idea that we haven't seen, and I and I like it. It's um, uh, gardening or that kind of uh, the motif is, is there, but nothing has tried this formula where uh, you have to do a certain thing, like have the water go down to grow flowers, but you also have to watch out for the weeds. I like it. I know, right? If the weed gets to the top, then you just your character shakes their head like it's not there. Yep, game. Uh, Curtis saying totally original gameplay. Yes. Yeah, I know. I wish there was a few other things uh, on top of that. So I wouldn't say, call this an excellent title of all the games you could play, but it is original. So I'm going to say three and a half stars of all the games you could play right now on a home computer. And Brian's thrown out three as well, around the average range of all the games on a home computer. So there's Greenhouse, a very unique one. Let's see what our next title is. Coming up next, we're back on the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Grid Trap. It's William Shatner again. He just won't stop selling us Commodore VIC-20s. Here we go. This is the box for Grid Trap. This has two different boxes. This one looks uh, more comical, fun, uh, strange boots that are flying up. But this one marks the gameplay really well. It has the skulls, the bombs. Every part of the, uh, of the game is right here on the unexpanded VIC-20. And then this is the other box that you may have seen. Locate and defuse time bomb, but watch out for mines and the big boot. You can see it uh, is more like we're playing as an android. Joystick or keyboard control if you want. High res, double density, color graphics, and superb sound. But every computer game calls themselves high res. Yes, right. It's totally not that. You think that with the grid on the front. There's the cassette for uh, Grid Trap by Livewire. So both boxes said Livewire. They must have been released two different ways. Let's pop in and play some Grid Trap. This is live wire software. We're going to the United Kingdom in the beginning of October 1982. So this one, I am not going to wait for the tape to load. It has two different loading states. So we're going to load our state and now have the live wire series load Grid Trap. There we go. There's the keyboard controls. You can scroll left and right and then ZC, comma, and slash. We're going to hit P to start. And we have uh, keyboard controls. And we're in. The screen wraps around, so if you look at the, the, the character I'm playing is the purple character. You gotta watch out for the boot. Now you notice whenever I go to the edge, I can't move because you only can move onto squares that have the teal colored grid. So you're essentially trying to get every single grid off the board. So in a way, it's a top-down maze game, but it's also a puzzle game. You have to move your character only where it is the grid. So you see right here, I'm going to oh, watch out for the boot, though. I don't know if I can get it. And then, of course, move away from the bomb, but the boot got me. We've already seen this game before. This was in the arcades as Checkman in May 1982 by Jalico. So this one is the first time you could play Checkman at home. And Checkman was a fresh idea. After playing all those games, a fixed screen from a top-down view, this one's a cool idea. You have to clear the screen by touching every single thing. But look what happened. If you go into a spot or you've locked yourself out to a, a place like this, it's going to give me... Uh, oh yeah, It's, it's going to let us slide the pieces around so we can uh, get free. But right now, see, we're totally stuck until the pieces slide. We're still waiting for the pieces to slide. So you have to... It's, it's almost like, remember when you first played Pac-Man? You wanted to figure out the best pattern to get all the dots on the maze. Well, this one's like another evolution of the getting all the pellets or the, the, the pixels on the screen. You have to collect every single thing part of the grid. Yeah, and if you take too long, then you, you die. So try to find the best pattern to, to collect everything before we're moving on to the next screen. Oh yeah, that, that's true. This game is similar to that. We haven't seen that game yet. We will be seeing it in the arcades. <laughs> I don't know if it's totally the future, but you can see... Oh, see, what, I kind of blocked myself. Can't get that last one over there. So I'm going to have to slide the pieces around. 
See what I did? Move the piece, or you just you just slide an entire row to the side. And I did the same thing here. I need to slide. Nope, but don't don't move the skull into you, or you will die. So there you go. Game over. F1 to start again. We'll do it again and push P to go. So for a video game in the arcades you may not have heard of, Check Man. If you never played that one or heard of that one, maybe you've heard of Grid Trap. Because this is the first time you could have played that at home. And see, if I get stuck, I can move that piece over. Let's see. Oh, I can move down. <laughs> it does feel like that. If you look at it from far away, Yubacor, maybe. There it is. Move them over. And then I'll move. Oh, I got to go to the side. There we go. Then you can make it over to the other side. Yeah, so a, a great title if you want something that's a mix of a maze game a or a, an arcade game with a puzzle game to it. Shows you how many bombs we have left, and I don't even think does the button do... Yeah, there's nothing the button that does. All it does is move you around to the other screen. Oh, no, I don't want the skull. Nope. Oh, darn. And something else to note, this is on the Commodore VIC-20, and it's an arcade game that's playing music while the game is going, which is really, really good for the Commodore VIC-20. We played a few games that do that, but it's still rare. Most of the games on the Commodore VIC-20, it's maybe some music before you play the game, and then you'll get some music. Uh, and then you'll play the game with no music. It'll be totally silent. Uh, he booted me. And the bomb is going to go off at the, to the, the time limit at the top, so you want to be able to clear as much as you can before that. So you also have a time limit. Oh, is that Amadar playing in the background? Let's do this pattern and see if this will work. I'll go there and then wrap all the way around to the other side. Very nice. And let's make our way to the top. I don't know how we're going to do the boot when there's nothing else left to avoid. Well, we'll give it a shot. Oh, yeah, good point, Brian. If it was only Commodore VIC-20, it would be higher. We only got 20 seconds left before the bomb goes off. Can we avoid the boot, too? No. Two. One. And death. Game over. We gotta clear the whole grid that amount of time. It's so fast. You, of course, are saying a cool three, two, and then a three and a half from Les Nuits Sans Kim Wilde. All right, so of all the games you can play right now on the home computer, this one's still original. I, I, I enjoyed it in the arcade. I still enjoy it here on the Commodore VIC-20. Yes, I know that's true, but maybe we just haven't heard a lot of programmers use the sound chip, Curtis. But of all the games you can play right now, I wouldn't say it's uh, quite as uh, polished as the arcade or as well done as the arcade. When we played it in the arcade, of all the arcade games, I said four stars. But for here on the Commodore VIC-20, I'm going to say three and a half. And I see Jeff and Curtis are saying the same as well. A little above average for all the games on a home computer. So still a fun time. Something a little unique because not every maze game does this. It's pretty fun. And we're also going to see this later on other home computers besides the Commodore VIC-20. So Grid Trap, don't worry. Uh, in the United Kingdom, all those micros, we'll see that there too. All right, let's see what our next title is. Coming up next, it's time to go to the arcade and play Satan's Hollow. I've been looking forward to this one. We've already had lots of references in the chat of Satan's Hollow. Here it is in the arcade, and the artwork is epic. There it is, Satan's Hollow, the hot new battle game that dares you to cross the blazing bridge of fire to do battle with the master of darkness, Satan of the Hollow. Take a look at that artwork. It's very gothic. And Satan in the background pointing at us, mocking us. Even tells you a little lore right there. He is darkness. He is omnipotent demon Lucifer. He is Satan of the Hollow. <laughs> That's right, Manly. We should play this game backwards and see what happens. How did this get released in the arcades? There was already controversy about parents not wanting their kids to go to the arcades. Maybe this is the arcade game. Why the parents didn't want them to go in the arcades. It was all Satan's hollow fault. If you flip it over the back, it shows you our adversaries, menacing gargoyles, battle egg droppers, releasing flaming eggs of fire, and even Satan's head is in the game. Destroy swarming gargoyles and win bridge pieces one by one. Build the bridge and cross into the valley to battle Satan himself. 
We're going to go fight Satan himself. It's awesome. Take aim using a uh, control grip. So this one I'll show you with, with the, uh, uh, the controller for this is pretty cool too. It's very similar to the one we saw on, on Tron. You also build the bridge of fire and battle Satan hurls deadly accurate pitchforks for you. This is by Bally Midway. And this one marks our 459th arcade game we've played on Chronologically Gaming. That's how many arcade games could be out there. 459. This one is going to be released later on the Commodore 64, so look forward to that one. There's the arcade cabinet. That's what I'm talking about. The joystick is very much like the joystick we saw on Tron. I think it's the same one manufactured by But Look at this. This arcade cabinet is amazing. It's got the fantastic artwork on the side. So you got the wood grain version here, but then, I mean, look at that. The, the red on the side is amazing. I don't know. If, we, we already played a few games with Devils and Demons, and we've even played Lucifer's Realm. Jim Pearson's text adventure game where we go to hell and Satan's there. But this one is, I mean, uh, the satanic panic's going on right now. How did this game get released? And there it is, the tabletop arcade cabinet. Very nice. This one is the ninth game we played by Bally Midway and the eighth game by Bally Midway in the arcades. Nice. The arcade cabinet, I can't get enough of it. I know, the cab's amazing. So this one's another one that I found. This is another joystick. It looks a little der derpier than the, the, the big major one. And then there's, there's the arcade PCB, and that's the one we want. That's amazing. And you got the two shields for left or right-handed players. However you're gripping that joystick, it's amazing. Yeah, maybe it's a replacement one. The controls are pretty simple. It's just a two-way joystick. Moves left and right, and you have a fire and a shield. There's the arcade marquee, another example of fantastic artwork that Valley Midway did. And even more artwork with an example of the screenshot. We have the manual, but it's all schematics. It's not anything that tells us anything about the game. We have two different sets, so it's just time to go to the arcades and play Satan's Hollow. This is Bally Midway at sometime at the beginning of October 1982. I know, the marquee is amazing. It's so good. All right, so this one, I actually don't remember if it's going to be loud or what the volume level is. If Satan hurts your ears, then you can blame him. Obtain the bridge pieces by shooting enemies and get the bridge from the left side and deposit on the right. So this is the attract mode, telling us a little bit how to play. Every time you kill an enemy, a bridge piece shows up. All you do is move to the left, go pick it up, and then move it to the right. And you got to build the bridge, sort of kind of build the bridge. And then if you make it to the other side, you go to the next screen. You can see the enemy patterns at the top, but notice the uh, resolution of the game. So this this style and the, the the way that this is presented is really unique because there's not a lot of games that that, that are this high resolution with the character sprites. The, we we saw a few others like um the, the Sky Skipper game that Nintendo did, but we're now starting to see a sprinkling of arcade games with higher resolution characters. It's the future. All right, let's put a coin in and go. And we're in. Bottom of the screen, it's a fixed shooter. You move left, you move right, you fire. We have, there's our shield, there you go. Our shield meter is over on the bottom left. And you see I just get grab a piece of the bridge and then move over to the right. Every time you kill one, a piece shows up so you don't have to just keep firing away. If you can get away with not killing anybody else, then go for it. I'm just gonna use the shield to, to bl blast them. There you go, get another one. We're looking good. I'll take that piece, and I think that's it. Nope, need one more. Use the shield. Yes, and then you make it over to the other side. Now we're on the next screen. We have a little bit of a, a Ride of the Valkyries playing in the background, which is awesome. So here he is, the amazing Satan. It's exactly like he was presented in the artwork. Oh no, there he is. Oh my gosh, I forgot to use the shield. <laughs> His fire breathing. Freaked me out. All right, let's get another piece. You can see that we got to have more to build the bridge, but look how much is happening now. Look how many enemies are flying in the air. Crazy. That's true, and if you do well enough against Satan, then you're going to get that upgrade. That's what we got to get. Gosh, man, and you explode into a, a billion pieces. Our ranking is 11. We already got game over that fast. It is a pretty simple fixed shooter because you have that shield mechanic. Let's go ahead and go in again. Oh, man. 
I know, we got the minion. That's right, Jeff. We need to get the Dark Lord himself. So notice that I killed other enemies, but I didn't get any other pieces because I hadn't picked up the bridge piece on the left. So make sure you pick up the bridge piece before you go to the next side. We'll take that one and that one. And then you can't fire on that one. But every time they add a flag to the castle, it's like you're going to the the next phase. We'll take that. There it is. Nice. We'll take that one, move it over, and I think that's it. All right, here we go. Make it to the next side. Yeah, difficulty is high, but it's really, really fun. The enemy patterns are similar to Galaga or Mooncresta, and the upgrade system is similar to Mooncresta. So, in a way, this is both... Good gosh, there's so much that came at me. <laughs> this is both a Galaga variant and a Mooncresta variant, or at least plays a little bit like that. I mean, look at all this. I'm going to have to use... God, my shield ran out. It's it's so many, so many gargoyles. All right, let's go to the left. Okay, there we go. Looking all right. Oh, and the red one was homing in on me. Cheeky. You see that another flag to the castle at the top? There he is. Oh, he's going down now. I'm going to remember my shield. Yes. We got it. And get another piece. Look at the enemy patterns. Look at this. It's like the bonus stage in Galaga. Take another one. I think we need one more. But the uh, sheer amount of enemies coming at us is really impressive. Look at that. He got us. Oh, man. He got <laughs> He pulled one of our lives and was taking it away from us. All right. Here. Get that one. Okay. That's it. Last piece. Nope. They're starting to blow up the bridge, too. All right. I'm going to get them. Get Satan. He's not that hard. Well, I guess if he avoids our, our shot, he is. Come here. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Yeah, any extra lives you have, they're going to steal them. All right, we made the bridge. Now we're on to the next stage. You can see how many flags we have on the left side. So it's a, a really good system to make you keep playing because you want to see how many flags or how many levels and difficulty you can go through. Got it. The minion is dead. Wow, it is so intense. There's so many enemies coming at you. And there it is, game over. Player one. Our rank is number one. Oh, we can put in initials too. I was hoping we could. So we can only move left and right. Move left, right, and... We should be able to do two or three. What? I guess we couldn't do more than two initials. All right, we'll just put... Oh, it is. It's only two. <laughs> it's only CH here on Satan's Hollow. Nice. Oh, yeah, and the uh, day and night cycle, or, or the way that it tr tr uh, transitions is really cool, too. All right, let's put another coin in. And can I put more coins for... Okay, if you do that, it'll be a two-player game, but it is alternate play, so you can't play Satan's Hollow together. Sorry, you can't team up to take out Satan with a friend. Curtis has already thrown out four. I see four, four and a half. Lots of higher ratings. Show of hands, who played this in the arcades at this time. I didn't play Satan's Hollow until late 90s. Uh, so I, I hadn't... My, my concept when I first played it was like, okay, it's just another game like Galaga or similar to Galaga. Here, though, uh, playing it's a totally different perspective. Let's get that and go to the right side. Yes. Brian was there. Go take it, and I think I need one. Okay, we made it. We're on the other side. I like their Ride of the Valkyries, too. We've heard that Ride of the Valkyries probably ten times here on the show. And the way that they do their Ride of the Valkyries is like a remix. Yes, Satan's dead. He's not that hard. Look how many enemies. Quick, blow up as many as you can because they're about to dive bomb you. Look at that. Oh, they're taking my extra life. <laughs> One thing you have to remember is to stay calm. If they take your extra life, you can't flip out. 
Oh, the tabletop version. That's awesome. Man, Satan went down so fast that time. <laughs> Let's get in there and get him really quick. They're doing it again. Stop him. That's it. Nice. And there he is again. Kill him. Oh, man. Yeah, so much fun. I like how it breathes new life in the concept of let's just move left, right, and fire that we've seen since, you know, 19, uh, 1978. <laughs> oh, they got us. I still got an extra life, though. Oh, yeah. It's hard, but rewarding. The, the flag system's a, a nice touch. There we go. All right, I'm ready now. Fire off some warning shots because you never know. There you go. You might get him on accident. Curtis, when you played the upright, did you get the joystick? The the, 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 the big giant one? Classic? Oh my gosh. Look at all this. Look at this. Look at this. This is insane. <laughs> oh, wow. Is there any extra lives or is that it? Man, that's what's really impressive is the amount of enemies coming at you at once is, is great. Yeah, that's so fun. I know it was. It was going to be the ship upgrade. So that's the only part that we missed. But of all the games you can play right now in the arcade, this is excellent. This is a lot of fun. Satan's Hollow is a, a better sh shooter, and it is very reminiscent of Galaga or Mooncresta, if, if you want to think of the, the other games that played like this. This one marks our 110th fixed shooter that we played in the arcade on the show. So 110 le move left, right, and fire games in the arcade. Uh, for Moon Cresta variants, another one that's out there is Eagle, and then Super Moon Cresta in 1981. Um, but Galaga, there's very few Galaga variants that play like Galaga. The only other one that I can think of to mind is AE that we played on home computers. And something else to note is the whole idea of building a bridge, we've seen that before in one other arcade game called Sky Army in July 1982. So, uh, But that one was more like defending someone so they could build the bridge. This one, you actually take place getting a piece and moving it back and forth. That's awesome. Also, it's October 1982, and you gotta admit, this is one of the most Halloween-ish video games. Oh, I mean, going to the arcade right now in October 1982 would be epic. I'd want to play Satan's Hollow a bunch. All right, so looking over the chat, I see lots of above-average ratings. I will attest, this is one of the best games you could play in the arcade. So I'm gonna say four and a half stars of everything so far. Lots and lots of fun. I like the flag mechanic. I like what they did with the, um, the, the the building a bridge. And they really didn't need a second screen, but they did it anyway. I mean, why not? So much fun. All right, it's time to put the video game playing on pause. Next time on Chronologically Gaming, we may meet some uh, little people that live in the Shire, and we take to the skies and play one of the best combat flight simulators. That's it for today, and like I always say, if you want to find me, I'll be in 1982. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.